OK, so now let's talk about uh, map design. So first, uh, let's talk about those basic uh, map elements. Uh, map, uh, normally, we can have a title. And we need the legend, the scale. So that is something new in the map. So that tell you the linear relationship between the physical object and also the object on the map. Uh, we have the mapped body. Uh, sometimes we need an inset map, so that can tell you more details of the uh, mapped area. And we also have a location map that can tell you the general location of the mapped area. So this is an example. So here um, we can see we have uh, this map does not have title as it's not uh, mandatory. And we do have the legend. OK, and we have the scale bar. Okay, so there are two types of scales. So one is using the scale bar, or we can use the, the grids. And in this on this map, the map body is this area. So that's a major area that we, oh sorry, we do have a title. Okay, we do have a title and also we also have a legend here. Okay. Uh, so this the mapped a, um, major areas and the inset map normally can tell you more details about the map body. And the locator map will tell you general location where uh, the mapped area is uh, located. And uh, we also have directions. So that normally can be used for uh, use by using a north arrow or by using the grid. So latitude, longitude, grid. And the neat lines is the one that surrounded the entire mapped body. OK, uh, so for example, this one is a neat line. And we do, uh, I think we have a, um, OK, so that is a neat line of the border. And we see that those are the latitude and longitude grid. So that can be used, that can be used to show both directions and also the scale. OK, and the map symbols, for example, the colors, etc. And we also have the place names. OK, um, and also credits, data source, etc. And also additional uh, information about the map. OK, uh, so those are the uh, basic uh, map elements. So let's also talk about map scale. So map scale is uh, the scale that um, between the mapped body versus the, the object that on the real world. OK, so uh, on the map, sorry, because you know the, the, the Earth is so so big. And also sometimes if you want to map a study area so that we cannot use a one to one map to show the start area. So we need to uh, use um, a small mapped area to represent the, the, the bigger uh, object on the Earth. So scale is defined as the ratio of the map distance to the Earth's distance. And remember that on geography, so scale is, for example, if you, your distance from one feet on the map representing 500 feet on the Earth, so the scale is 1 to 500. And if instead you have a map that is 1 to 5,000, OK? In geography, this one is a big scale map, and this is a small scale map. OK, because the value of this scale is smaller. So that means that when we're talking about the larger scales, that will show small areas. OK, larger scales will tell you about small areas, give you more details. OK, it is less generalized, and that is a zoom in action. OK, so that is larger scale. Small scales will tell you a larger areas, but with less details, and it will be more generalized. So for example, a building on the larger scale may be a, a box or rectangle. OK, on a small scale, it might just be a point, OK, single point. So it is will be more generalized, and it is like a zoom out action. And when we express the scales, so there are several ways, like word statement, or you can use a number fraction, 
or you can use graphic skills. So that means on this screen, this entire lens representing 40 miles on the Earth. OK, so that's a graphic skills. And graphic skills is the recommended one. The reason is because so when you zoom in, when you put your map, for example, uh, zoom your map out and the graphic skills can be enlarged at the same time. So it will always stay true. OK, so graphic skills is always preferred. OK, so types of the maps. So we have core plus map. Uh, we have dot density map. Uh, we have proportional symbol map. Um, it's a rhythmic map, cartogram, flow map, and also other types of the maps. So core plus map is the most common one that we saw that we see those type of map a lot. So those are used to representing numbers. <clears throat> okay. And sometimes we also call it area or shaded maps. Okay, so that's basically that you have the geographic area and you have the numbers. So we just fill in those areas by using different type of the colors. Okay, so it can be sequential or diverging color schema. Okay, so that is a core class map. And as we said that uh, data classification is very important concern because the inappropriate data classification will generate different feelings of your map. And also the symbols and the legend. So how do you want to design the legend, etc. are also all the major concerns. So that means core plus map can be distorted if you choose inappropriate data classification or if you choose diff inappropriate colors, etc. OK, so in Tableau, so uh, it is called field in map. So this is one example that we can create a core plus map in Tableau. And this is also another example of the core plus map. Um, so you can see that they're using different color skills. To re so this is a diverging skill. OK. Uh, to show the household per property. And this is also another on um, core plus map. And we can see they are using different categorical colors. Within each category, they are using the sequential color schemas to represent the number of people that are using different term when they're talking about uh, cook, uh, cook. OK. Um, the second type of the map is called dot density map. So that means that we use one dot to represent many items. OK, um, so for example, uh, in this case, one dot represent 900 persons. So if you have uh, if our area have uh, 1,800 persons, it's just simply two dot. OK, so that is what we call the dot value. So one dot equals 900 persons. And on, and on this map, the dot value is one dot represent 300 persons. OK, so if you have uh, again, 1,800 people. So on this one, you will have six dots. OK, so the major concerns uh, for the dot density map is that when you choose the right unit, the dot size and also dot values. So for example, we can see for the same data by choosing the different dot values. So it will give you a different feelings. On this one, you can see it is more crowded. OK, if you don't see the legend. And also by choosing different dot size. So on those two maps, so we are using the same dot value. However, on this map, we are using a bigger dot size. So this may look like more crowded. OK, so that is another major concern for the dot density map. So dot density map can also be um, distorted, distorted. And also the adjustment of the place on the dot. So uh, normally, the dot are located randomly. So in the rear scenario, so for example, in the extreme scenario, so for example, each location have four dots, one dot. But one map, I put all the dots here. Another map, I put all the dots on the corners. OK, so they are using the same dot value and also the same dot size. But they also can tell you a different story. So this is more like clustered and this is more like dispersed. OK, so those are all the potential 
uh, issues of using dot density map. So dot density map can also be distort, uh, distorted. This is one example of the actually it's a dot map is not uh, strictly a dot density map because in this case one dot equals one bank. Okay, so this is a dot map and we can see um, the patterns that where the banks are located. Okay, and it's very easy to see those patterns by using the dot map. We can see different banks, they have different distributions. Okay, so this can even clear so uh, distributions. We can say TD Bank is on the East Coast and uh, okay, all those banks are on the East Coast. And this is another um, example that by using different colors. Okay, so you can see it's very clear to see the patterns of the distributions of those banks. Okay, proportional symbol map. Proportional symbol map is also another very common map. So instead of using colors, so we're using the size of the symbols to represent the values. So for example, on this case, uh, we use the size of the circles to represent the number of the courses. Okay, in different state. Okay, and however, remember I said that people has less accurate perception on those two dimensional um, uh, symbols. So that is what I meant here. So people has perfect perception for the one dimension signals like lens. People tend to underestimate the two dimensional symbols and people has the worst um, perception about three dimension symbols. So that's why that proportional symbol map is also has also its own problems issues that is because we are using two dimension symbols to represent the map uh, to visualize visualize the data. OK, so people tend to underestimate the values. So what does that mean? So for example, if we have the length, if the relationship is two to one, so we may have very perfect perception. However, if we put that into two dimensions, okay? So for example, if the relationship is actually, um, let's say uh, four to one, okay? So if, for example, real uh, mathematically, but we, when we look at that one, we feel like it might be six, or, or sorry, three to one. Okay, three to one. Because we underestimate the size of those two dimensional symbols. Okay, so that's the problem of, of using the proportional symbol map. But it's very common. So here is one example using the proportional symbol map, okay, to show the size, to show the values. And this is a terrible example of using the proportional symbol map or using the, uh, it can, it, 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 this one actually is a dot map, right? Because each single dot represents a, um, a location of the uh, GOP recovered by county, so each county. So this is actually a terrible dot map. We also have the arithmetic map or three dimensional maps. Okay, um, so um, this is one example of the uh, of such type of map, and now we also have another type of map which is called heat map. Okay, heat map is now very popular, so they may look slightly similar to this type of map. So they are just using the gradient colors to show the quantities, and we also have the. A cartogram. So cartogram is also called a value by area map. So that instead of keep the true size or the true location of the geographic areas, so we are changing either the area, the size, okay, or the location, or the position of those geographic areas. So we are using the size of the areas to representing the values. Okay, so that is called cartogram. Um, and this actually has been pretty common uh, in reality. So for example, that we, uh, in the past, 
present presidential elections when we're talking about electronic vote. OK, so different state, they have different number of the votes. So we can use a size to indicate, OK, so if the state had more votes, it will have a bigger size. The state with uh, fewer votes will have a smaller size. OK, so we are no longer keep the size of geographic locations to be true. OK, so to show their uh, relative, um, to show the difference in their number of the votes. And we also have flow map. OK, just show the linear movement between places. Although there are also some major concerns about flow map. So for example, it's hard. It, it may have issues with projections because you have those flows. OK, so that are not real distributed on the Earth. And also scaling to choose the right symbols, etc. OK, uh, so this is an example of the flow map. OK, and we can see that uh, uh, how the different places are connected. 